And you know, last week, and I have to mention this because I'm from the state, 300 miles from where I live, a few days ago, a brutal massacre occurred of innocent children. 19 innocent children were senselessly murdered for no reason whatsoever, along with their two teachers. This incident in this country, sadly, it's not unique and it's not rare. In the last 10 years, brothers and sisters, in this great land of America, over 1,000 mass shootings have taken place on school campuses. There is no other country on earth where this statistic even comes close. Wallahi, it is mind-boggling and I had to actually make sure the statistic is true. And I challenge you to look this up as, uh, as well. The statistic that I'm about to tell you, look it up yourselves. The number one cause of death of children and teenagers in this country. The number one cause of death of children and teenagers in this country. It's not drugs. It's not car accidents. It's not cancer. It's not falling sick. The number one cause of death of children and teenagers in the United States of America is gun violence. No other country on earth has this statistic. Now, brothers and sisters, we as Muslims, we can't just sit back and say, oh, that's their problem. Firstly, what world are you living in? Don't your children go to the same schools? Don't you live here as well? Secondly, when we live with the people, when we live in a society, their problems become our problems. These are our people. That's what the Prophet ﷺ demonstrated. You feed the hungry, you take care of the poor, you give shelter to those who have no shelter, you sponsor the orphan. In all of this, it doesn't matter the religion of the one you feed. It doesn't matter the religion of the orphan. It doesn't matter the religion of the one sick. Wallahi, if you have to ask the religion of the one who is sick, it is you who are sick and not the one who is sick. This is the fact. Of the matter our religion transcends other religions when it comes to helping them so when we're talking about this endemic gun violence one way to tackle it is to talk about legislation with guns and fire weapons and there's no doubt that needs to be discussed but this is not my area I'm not a politician I'm not somebody who deals with you know how to do, do with gun violence and whatnot all I'll say look at other Western countries New Zealand Canada Australia and look at what they have done and the success rates that's one tangent but I want to bring up another tangent and I know brothers and sisters that this tangent is highly highly sensitive I know that what I'm about to say might cause some people to jump on this clip and spread it and say oh this guy is saying this and that but you know what me not talking about your gun problem and gun violence is not going to make it go away somebody has to point out a brutal reality before we jump to the gun violence before we jump in trying to legislate why a young man shouldn't have a gun which to me makes complete common sense before we even get there i have a very difficult question that all of us have to ask ourselves and that is the following why in this particular country why are so many young men wanting to commit mass violence against innocent people? I mean, a 17-year-old should not be thinking about harming 20 school children. A 17-year-old should be daydreaming about his future, his job, his family, his children. Yet, the highest number, the, 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 the rate of depression and of teen suicide the rate of violence in that age group has reached proportions that are unprecedented in human history. Before we get to controlling gun violence, we have to ask ourselves, where is this evil, dastardly, vile notion of killing innocents coming from? And I will tell you one statistic, just one. Do your research. There was a number of studies done profiling the mass shooters of the last 10 years. I read a number of them. Two statistics stuck out to me. Two statistics. Now, I'm not blaming everything on this, but statistics speak for themselves. Statistic number one, 85% of mass shooters in this country had zero affiliation with any religion. 85% have nothing to do with God, with church, with synagogue, with mosque. 
85% have no spirituality in their lives. And statistic number two, 75% of mass shooters come from broken homes where one or both, and typically the father, is absent. 75% of mass shooters come from broken homes. I'm sorry to be blunt about this, and I know some people might take this clip and read into it, but me not talking about this statistic is not going to change the endemic violence that is rampant in this country. When you are going to make fun of religion, ban religion, kick religion out of every single sphere, when you're going to make your media such that being religious is considered backward and abandoning religion is cool, well then, what else are you going to do except take the most important thing that a person should have and leave it with nothing but emptiness? Also, when it comes to the family, and oh my God, how much can be said about the family? This society and culture, and I have to be blunt, and I'm a part of this society and culture. I was born and raised here, but I have to call a spade a spade. They have destroyed the foundation of society by completely tearing apart the traditional family structure. They have opened the door for hedonism, for promiscuity, for easy sex. They have made everything permissible. Even that which was considered immoral is now considered moral. What do you think is going to happen when you destroy the bedrock of society? You can talk as much as you want. You cannot change biology. And biology teaches us that a child needs the love of a father and the love of a mother. That is the default.